Today, Melville Media takes a deep dive into academia by looking at the literary habits of students through the eyes of the English department. One of the assignments in my class is to read a book that's been turned into a movie. So for my class, they're required to do uh, a reading of an adaptation. Um, and overall, I don't see kids reading a lot on their own anyway, so I would say, uh, yeah, it's more of a forced reading sometimes. There's so many students that end up thanking me in the long run because they don't have time to read um, outside of school. They feel really busy and overwhelmed, and those 15 minutes provide them like a quiet time where they can actually like enjoy a book for a change. With the change in TAP this year, we're going to see less students coming in during that time that we would have seen during just kids getting a pass, coming down to grab a book and go. Uh, but maybe we'll get more during lunches or we're seeing more before or after school for just kind of quick pop-ins. They can find books on placeholds on Destiny through their computers anytime they want and we will pull those books and set them on the shelf so they just have to come right in and grab them. Um, they can also come in, everybody comes down in this area for lunch and we are open for kids to be able to come in and, and find books. As times change, so do the books we read. Melville's English department puts a modern spin on classic literature, so whether you love it or you hate it, it's here to stay. Well, with classics, it's really important that you connect those classics with issues that are facing their world right now. You can teach Shakespeare, but you can show, for example, if you are teaching Much Ado About Nothing, how teenage gossip has been a problem since thousands of years, right? And there's ways of connecting it. I do think that it's really important that when you do teach classics, that you bring in modern pieces as well, so that you can show students these same themes, these same characters, these same ideas, they've been around forever. I am a big proponent of like mixing the classics with modern literature so students can see the connections and why they're all so relevant. So I really try to make sure that it's not just about like reading this because it, you're supposed to and it's an English class, but reading it because there's something valuable in it for you. Um, so if I hype it up enough, then the hope is that they embrace the projects and they really enjoy what they're doing. The reality is is that these stories are great, but the medium that they were originally given was just telling. You know, it would be somebody that they would sit around a fire or whatever, or in a meat hall or whatever the case, and they would tell each other stories. And there would be one person who was responsible for telling all the stories, or a couple people, and it was like a, it was almost it was the the movies of that time, or you know, reading a book at the time so um, I think that we I don't think that us looking at the retelling is much different than how it was actually passed down through the oral tradition in the first place so um, typically instead of like getting like the basic you know translation like a Edith Hamilton or something like that it's usually um, it's much more palatable if you will and not just for, for my students but for me as well uh, like we do scripts script plays and we do like and we watch like the pop the pop culture, we look at movies to see, you know, what we see. Believe it or not, they, they like The Crucible. I think that they find it unfair that so many people get falsely accused. I think that resonates with teenagers, with gossip causing people to get into big trouble. It's, it's you know, a theme that they're familiar with. So what are students reading on their own? Let's see what our teachers have to say. I think we check out a lot of true crime. We check out a good number of mystery and horror. Um, a pretty good number of romance, and then also um, this year, especially I think a ton of graphic novels and manga. We've always checked out a lot of manga. This year I think we've seen more non-manga graphic novels get checked out. Um, uh, a lot of horror, uh, a lot of Stephen King, um, some uh, I would say romantic um, comedy, sometimes uh, a little, little teen drama. Uh, those type, of, those type of books. I really encourage them to find something that they love, so if they're not enjoying a book, then I tell them that they should return it and find something else. So um, genres are kind of all over the place. I have kids that are reading like textbooks because that's really what interests them, and then I have others that 
are reading graphic novels, which is great, like whatever sparks their interest. It doesn't matter as long as they're reading and they're finding something that they can connect to. And that to me is the power of reading, is being able to see something in that writer's work that resonates with you. Melville Media asked for an opinion on the latest literary trends, book talk and bookstagram. Here's the resounding opinion. Oh, they're excellent. I mean, that's a way to engage. I mean, when you you know, oftentimes, you know, you shouldn't just read what you're assigned in school. You should be reading things that you are interested in, that you like, that you love. And that's how, you know, I haven't, I haven't traveled the world, but I've traveled the world. And I've traveled it because I read books. So, you know, you just, you get something that you like. And then once you, and then there you find other people who like it too. And, you know, that's one of the positives of social media that we get to connect with people who are interested in the same things that we're interested in. So we can, so yeah, absolutely. I think it's phenomenal, you know, as long as it's done safely, obviously. But yeah, that's a great thing to do, to be able to communicate with people who, you know, like the same things that we do. And we can, and, and you know, and still sharp and steel. So when we, you can bounce things off of people. So like if you do want to be an author or don't, you know, but you can see what's a good, you know, I'm thinking this about this. Is this person thinking this too? And, you know, if you're on the right track or not, it's perfect. I love it. I think it's great. I think anything that gets kids interested in reading more books is a positive. I mean, just like encouraging my students to read anything, like even if I don't think that it's like a great piece of literature, just getting them to read. I think anything that like sparks an interest in people and gets them to read. I mean, like I find inspiration online and social media and things too. So I think that it's great. Like I think it has like stimulated a whole group of kids to read and pick up books and adults too, I say kids, but adults too that might not have normally like gravitated towards books. So I think it's great. You know, I, I appreciate those. My bigger concern is book bans that I'm seeing. That we are now limiting so much of the material that students can connect with. I'm a big fan of a concept called bibliotherapy. The idea that you can give a student a book that will help them see themselves and their challenges in that book so they don't feel so alone. And I feel like when we institute these book bans, when we limit students from being able to see other characters and other themes that, that resonates with them, we're doing them a terrible disservice. Reporting from the library, I'm Sophia Menard for Melville Today.